Good morning, folks. Top story is from last night's news. A wildfire burning since late 2012 in the middle of nowhere, Alaska, in a caldera on top of a mountain. Locals are smelling a sulfurous smell, but the USGS and other geologists say there is no evidence of volcanic activity there. They're blaming shale gas fire underground. Shot of the day comes from NASA's Earth Observatory. Plumes over northern Australia and the Timor Sea. Leaking water tanks spreading radioactivity are the cause for increased alert at Fukushima. Latest global climate report is out, our monthly check against the daily U.S. records. Healthy mix of hot and cold anomalies on the map, apart from another year of above average Antarctic sea ice, they've mostly highlighted the heat events. Guess that's why the U.S. is blank. You can also add Austria to the severe drought list. Literally every day for a month I've said the same thing. Storms sticking to southern Australia and New Zealand with that high pressure parked atop the larger island keeping it mostly dry. Using WOW expert pressure charts to reveal the high pressure break between low pressure cells in Europe, one exiting the continent, and another at the northern edge cresting now. Low pressure up the central states wants to pull all that air to the big low in Canada, but the high pressure out east also has a northward push to the western side of its clockwise drive. That forces moisture and energy north with this wind to meet what's coming down from Canada for severe storm threats this evening. Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean looking clear of tropical development, while south of Mexico we see yet another developing cell, and this one should pretty much run up the coastline this week. Taiwan and China coastlines, the time for warnings is over, it's there, hope you are prepared. Go shows x-ray solar flares picking up slightly. They make the signature emanating from the equator, but this degradation on the north and the south is something else. SOHO rates 92% certainty of this interplanetary shock signature. I'm around 99. ACE shows similar readings here. The geomagnetic disturbance is just beginning on the charts, while energetic flux and proton storms are possible today. The auroras lit up as it hit as well, and I believe this is the CME that both NOAA and NASA said would miss Earth from the M3 solar flare and coronal mass ejection August 17th that produced this blatant halo eruption. The rising speed following the density spike could indicate that the coronal hole stream due at Earth today was right on the heels of its plasma cloud. Regardless, as this event unfolds, another CME is headed our way. The massive filament eruption is now unquestionably going to impact Earth according to NASA and NOAA and your own two eyes. Cactus diagnoses this as a moderately speedy CME and shouldn't cause any electrical damage. Per last night's news, Watch score dropped to 5 or even 4 between the coronal holes now and until this space weather fully envelops Earth. Full moon today, but more alignments follow this week. The score remains low for now, with the only significant shaking in the Kuril Islands, but this lull will be brief and the watch score is trending back up. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.55am Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.